Okay, hello everyone. So this is uh, March 14th, 2023, in case you're watching the replay in like 2030. I mean, let's just send some love and gratitude into the future, right? <laughs> um, so this is, we've been meeting just kind of for fun and to share the Creatively Fit painting process, what Creatively Fit coaches do, answer any of your questions. We do that towards the end. Um, there are a bunch of creatively fit coaches here. So you all, I am model what you are free to do at any point. Create a open studio and just create space for people to paint, to paint, to relax, paint, to pause. I sat down at one o'clock. Melissa's like, oh, have you been getting ready? I'm like, I paused. So I sat down and I opened up one of my jinky books to a random page and read about the power of the pause. And I'm like, yes, I am going to pause. And it talked about how when we pause, we're creating space for our heart to speak, our intuitive self to speak, to register how we feel. Because if you guys noticed, like I'm getting rapid fire emotions lately. And if I don't pause, I feel like I'm just, like I'm just getting bombarded with all these feelings and energies inside. So the pause was fabulous. And then I decided to pause in the pink because you guys see these earrings look fabulous. And I got my pink lip gloss on. So I just poured my pink on me and I'm like, I'm just going to pause with pink. And then I was like, of course, pausing with pink. You know? uh -huh, uh -huh. It would only other work if I had purple. Anyway, so we are going to open up our open studio with some painting pausing. Oh my gosh, it just keeps going, the piece. Um, and so if you're all on mute, so if you wanna turn on some music, I was going to do that, but then, you know, YouTube and music royalties and all the things. So um, we're gonna take a moment, we're gonna take just a couple minutes because watch how quickly we can pause and create the space. And then today, um, after we pause with some paint, we're going to pull some cards. Oh. I guess today is brought to you by the letter P. <laughs> <laughs> Any of you who grew up watching Sesame Street? I don't know. I, I watched a ton of Sesame Street growing up, so it's just in the field. All right. So what I want you to do, so the thing about, because of the pink, when I was pausing, I was like, okay, what is pink? I'm going to pause with the pink. What is pink? want to communicate to me. And I was like pink. I thought of rose quartz. I thought of heart chakra, which is kind of on my mind lately. Anyway. So I want you to look at the colors you have available to you and just pick the one that like ugh, speaks to you right now. Like what color do you want to bathe yourself in? And um, nice, Carol. And I put um, pink and white and then I added a yellow in there. So pick another color, uh, one other color, ideally. You don't have to follow my prompts. This, this is a prompt, okay? Um, and so uh, your favorite yummy <clears throat> color, and then perhaps white, and then a color that will complement it, that will mix together to make another color, like pink and yellow make orange, right? Because we might just play with the shadow too, which... You all know, we get excited. <laughs> Kate, Sesame Street was not before your time. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna switch the camera. I am using the still camera. On. So nobody, Sesame Street's everybody's time. It's still on. There's exactly. still ones. Yes, on, guys. thank you. <laughs> and um, you can watch your favorite little clips on YouTube. I've discovered that. In the Whitney Freya studio page, I'm going to post my favorite Bert and Ernie clip that just made my whole life make sense. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera. And uh, this is the canvas, you guys, that I started, that I was just using as my palette in the first two open studios. Okay, and then I used it as like a drop cloth the other night when I was working on the Women for Women art. Um, and then look at this clean palette. Okay, we have to share it. Look at, this is what it looked like. And I was like, oh, it's gotten kind of dark. And I peeled it off. And look at this. It's like gold and pink. And anyway, again, the little things. All right, so let's take a deep breath. Just as someone, right, who's been running around and 
doing lots of things. And then whenever you feel ready, just dip your brush in the paint and just start making your mark. And Melissa is collaborating with me on this canvas. So that's going to be really fun. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you're working on a blank canvas, this would be where you might um, be intending to cover the white predominantly. If you're working on a canvas that you've already started like this one, just, you know, just play. The idea is, oh my gosh, another P word. Um, the idea is to get to the play. So in my teaching painting world and what those of you who are attracted to this world, I think are also attracted to is using the painting practice to like relax and allow yourself to just kind of effortlessly slip into this meditative state. Okay. This isn't heavy in the like, well, it's not even connected to any kind of um, fine art skill or teaching. And that can happen uh, very intuitively. But first and foremost, what I personally want to experience and then I want to offer to as many people as possible is that losing yourself, forgetting the past, forgetting the future, and becoming completely distracted by the color and the brush strokes. Getting back to that inner child. And the reason getting back to the inner child is so important is because your inner child, the inner child I'm talking about, has no baggage, no stories. She still wants to be an astronaut or a tightrope walker or a scientist or, you know, just whatever she wanted to be. She is not afraid to speak her truth. She will get angry. She will get excited. She doesn't edit. She doesn't mute. And she, therefore, is like way closer to that intuitive, heart-led heart. Today is brought to you by the letter P and the shape of the heart, which is upside down on your screen right now. Okay, so this is more important than anything. Because I know it's hard to believe, but it is possible. I have witnessed that you can stay like stressed and in judgment while you paint. It is, it is available to you. But that's not what we're about here. And all the kudos in the world, if that is your MO, but it is just absolutely not mine. So. So I want this first for you. I want today to be like, oh my gosh, I am so relaxed because I just played with pink all afternoon. <laughs> like that's what I want for you. That's my first wish. Okay, so we're just playing and you know we're going to layer. So I guess that's why I'm using my finger here and kind of, making things not quite so chunky, just so that maybe they dry. So even, you can mute me if you want, if you see my face come back on, then you'll know to unmute me, but really let yourself get so stinking excited about the color and the way things are overlapping. I just got really excited about, let's see, I can, okay this texture right here. Do you see that? Yeah. <laughs> and you can, oops, I thought that was the end of the brush. You can like scrape into the paint, which may or may not dry by the time we go over, but oh, I love the scraping. If you're in your 
crafty studio -y room, you could always set this aside to dry and then, okay. Y'all are gonna lose me to the right brain. Woo, that is so thick, Melissa. What are we gonna do with that? Uh, you did not give me instructions, <laughs> darling, that we were layering. Huh? I'm not the painter in the group. <laughs> That's gonna be fun. Okay. Okay. So now the invitation is to take an opposite color. So if you had pink, mm -hmm. that has a lot of red in it. So the opposite mm -hmm. would be green. Um, type in the chat. I'm not gonna total, you're listening to Pink Martini. I'm not gonna totally get into all the opposite color theory because, oh God, I love that so much too. But um, if you have blues, you can put um, some kind of orange in there. Or if you think of just adding the other two primaries. So if you put any kind of blue, put red and yellow in your palette. If you put purple, put some yellow in there because purple is red and blue, yellow would be the other. So in other words, we're gonna mix shadow. We're gonna make some mud mm. because Check out this symbolism, people. We get really afraid of the muddy, shadowy places in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes us uncomfortable. It makes us be quiet. Sometimes we even feel, speaking from experience, like shame and guilt. Blah. And um, and we're, we can recreate that. So I've added this like turquoise blue. And instead of going over everything, I'm just going to kind of paint it in to, I'm gonna add a little yellow to it so it gets greener, since pink is kind of related to red. <sighs> so in other words, you, you could also just put a whole bunch of paint on your canvas and um, start mixing it all together. But the idea is to leave some places without adding the opposite color. So if you make sure my screen is big so you can see, but um, this heart where I've mixed, where I'm mixing this kind of green into the pink is getting a little muddy. Ooh. It's getting a little muddy, which we don't mind because the life art truth is when you've got the mud, which is also the shadow, it makes the colors that don't have the mud in it look illuminated. Ooh. So without the shadow, mm -hmm. there ain't no Ill illumination. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So a lot of times when we start painting on this first layer, like I've heard so many times, almost as many times as I've heard, I can't even draw a straight line. Uh, it just gets so muddy, right? And that's only because you're mixing opposite colors, but that is such a great place to be on your canvas because when it dries and when you layer over, the colors that you put on top are going to look like they're glowing mm. because you have the mud. Mm. And this is um, mm. this is a thing in our life, right, Melissa? Mm -hmm. That our muddy times in our life, which we've all had multiple, I'm pretty sure I can speak for all of us. Um, it's those times that make the non-muddy times that much more fabulous and we can feel gratitude because we know what the muddy times feel like. So we wanna make friends with the mud. The mud in our lives and on the canvas are here to help us. Okay. Mm. 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 Right, I know. Yep. You got to do a little mud dance. A little muddy dance. Uh -huh. You might need to put on some hip hop and do a little dancey dance. Do a little dancey dance or some 80s, 80s music. I'm not sure how I'm going to pull the cards now on all this wet paint. Well, I, I can be your Vanna if you like, and I'll, I can Ooh. hold the cards while Ooh. you yes, please. speak of them. Okay, so if you um, want to take a moment while you're painting and just reconnect to your breath and you can stop chuckling. I know you're all chuckling, mm -hmm. chuckling along with us. Um, and just feel yourself, like the aspects of yourself, all the do, do, do coming into this moment. 
Okay. So again, a big theme for today, our intention is, should you choose to accept, you're always welcome to set your own intention, is to create today's new understanding of this relationship that wants to expand between your mind and your heart. We talked about this yesterday in one of the Creatively Fit Coaching business calls, okay? So this is how we do business in Creatively Fit Coaching land. We talk about your heart and your intuition. And someone asked about how to attract the intuition that helps you understand what creative action to take, right? Like as a mother, a lot of us understand for those mothers understand, or for yourself, the, that kind of intuition that's like speed up, slow down, grab that glass out of the way before it gets doink to doink. Um, but the kind of intuition that's like, yeah, teach that, you know, go there, learn that, whatever, is maybe a little more abstract. So what we realized together is that that intuition, which is coming from not your logical mind, not your historical self, the you that, you know, was born in such and such a place to so-and-so and so-and-so and, and, you know, has had these shadowy experiences in your life. That intuition comes from your pure, like that inner child, like the, the, your angel, your guide, your higher self, whatever that is for you. It comes from the part of you that just knows. And it wants to access you through your heart space. So imagine that there's this like channel. So I'm drawing this white line. However you can visualize or paint or whatever, this channel of information, of communication, of fill in the blank between your heart and your mind. Oh, look, I'm drawing the DNA. <laughs> okay. And maybe as you're breathing right now, allow your breath to kind of clear this channel between your heart and your mind, your mind and your heart. And what your heart always wants to ask you is darling, beloved, what do you desire? How can I love you right now? When's the last time you asked yourself that? <laughs> okay, we want this to become like, oh, just five minutes ago I asked myself that. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay, so you're welcome to keep painting. Melissa and I are going to pick two cards. Okay. And I'm introducing this use of our painting practice and the, the cards, the divination, because, and you guys uh, raise your hand or comment in the chat, if you've ever experienced today, um, the trying to figure it out, trying to figure it out. I need to figure it out. Right? I don't know. I'm struggling. I got to figure it out. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Just recognize, let's just create a witness. That's your mind, your logical thinking mind that has some limitations. It has boundaries. It's pulling from your past. It's physiologically responsible for your past and your future. Okay, so what your figuring out mind does is look through your file cabinet of experiences and books you read and conversations and all the things. And then it uses that to project into the future what your possibilities are. So when we're figuring things out, we're, we have access to our historical experience up until now. Mm -hmm. Up until now. Okay. Your heart, the, the complement, the, the dance partner, the feminine to the masculine, which we need both, right, is your heart wisdom. It's the present moment. 
In the present moment, you don't have any history, which thank goodness, right, for the left brain. I mean, my God, we've learned a lot, right, ladies? There is a lot of water underneath our bridge. We've learned a lot. Okay, so we don't want to forget that. But if we're wanting to lean into something new, if we understand like you all are on this spiral path of constant expansion, whether you know it or not, you wouldn't be in this space here vibing with me if you weren't on the spiral path, which means you signed up for a life of continual learning, growth, expansion, change, and newness. Not the realm of your left brain, logical, rational mind. That's your heart. Okay, so when we're feeling confused, anxious, struggling with anything, what's that a sign of? That's the sign like, yo, we don't got the answer in the past. We need you to chicken with your heart and chicken with the present to get your very next present moment steps. Not what you're even going to do tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now, but just right now, the very next step. Which the good news is it's always really easy. I love it. It's like, open up the computer. Oh, I can do that. Now turn it on. I can do that. Now search how to learn how to belly dance. I can do that, right? Like whatever it is, the very next step is always super, super easy. But you do one present moment step in front of another and shatola, man, all kinds of things happen. So your heart and your mind meant to be in this I mean, you know, those like salsa dancers or that dancing with the stars or something where they're just like, that's what your heart and mind want to do. Okay. And your heart's been on the dance floor, like, yo, come on. And the mind's like, no, I'm over here figuring it out. I'm busy. I'm busy. Leave me alone. I got important things to do. Oh my gosh. She's making me funny. <laughs> so this painting practice, one facet of it, one of the bajillion of facets of just this same process that a lot of you have done with me over and over is to invite the mind and the heart onto the dance floor, onto the palette, onto the canvas of your life. And when you're tapping into that heart space, that's when you'll know the very next right step. And then when that right step says, we need to learn how to speak in public, or we want to learn how to, you know, we need more money, we need more time, we need someone to help edit the book. We need, you know, Melissa's got some crazy stories lately. That's when your left brain's like, I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. This, the left brain is not the creative, visionary, intuitive, wild woman side of you. Mm -mm. So we want both. So that's what we're doing today. So we're going to ask for a card. So first time we're going to pull from the Rainbow Warrior Awaken deck. Many of you have this. I've met these ladies. They are like beyond fabulous. They're in Oregon on the coast. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's the Rainbow Warrior deck and we are all, whether you know it or not, Rainbow Warriors. Um, so we're gonna do this first. And then Melissa has a deck of her friends that she's gonna introduce. And we're gonna allow each of these cards to just speak to you and give you an idea of what you might want to paint next on your canvas, just next, okay? All right, so this is cool. So you hold, so I'm going to use my pendulum because, you know, I love my pendulum. Okay, okay. If you guys haven't watched my YouTube channel on how to use a pendulum to pick a card, you can. So I'm just going to ask which card wants, to, okay, it's very obvious. Okay, now split it in half again, please. Okay. Heart, help our mind and hearts and communication and these rainbow warriors. What they want to, oh, so change. What they want to create today. Okay. All right, we'll wait until yours. Okay, all, all right. right. Okay, so Melissa, introduce your card deck because I don't know this card deck and I'm digging um, it. So Susie, and you'll know this because Jennifer plays with us. Um, this is Jennifer Steedley. She's in Colorado. She is another indie deck creator. I am as well. And this is an amazing deck that she crowdfunded last year. She's a graphic designer and this amazing being. And what she did was she took tarot cards and she separated them down into the specific symbols that are on each of the cards so that you don't even, gotta let somebody in, you don't even have to understand what tarot is. You can go 
straight into these symbols and let the symbols speak to you. And I know that our Whitney goddess is a symbol fanatic. And so I felt like this was a nice deck to add to this to see if there's which of the symbols. And because these cards are very rich with symbols, I'll hold it up for a couple of minutes and see which symbols jump out at you. That's the way that you read them is, oh my gosh, I saw those cups first. Like that was the first thing that I drew me and have that be the reading that's for you. And yeah, so like the chalice is my symbol from this year. The chalice, oh, well, duh. Okay, you choose the card, darling, and just choose it with your hand. Are you okay? Not pendulum? No, it's going to be not upsetting. Pendulum. No, it's not. Um, so again, the other reason I use cards, if any of you have not used cards, this is again to distract that logical brain and engage the heart. Okay. It's the non-logical way to add in kind of a disruptor <laughs> to disrupt your pattern of thought. So you can get to the, I yes, wouldn't please. have thought about this. Yes, okay. Please. Okay. Okay. Heart mind, heart mind, heart mind. Oh, pinky. Pinky. Pinky pink. Oh my gosh. It's a that pinky wanted to it's all about the pinkies. Goodness. Is that Lord. it, darling? Oh, I got That's, it. Okay. So it's first called disassembled tarot. Disassembled. Is it available? Where is it available? Um, you just Google it because she she has, I think she has an Etsy shop. So Jennifer Steedley disassembled. Tarot. I'll post the cards and the links and everything on the Whitney Freya Studio page. Okay. Okay. But if you're yeah. watching that on YouTube, thank you for watching on what YouTube. What we get? What we get? Um, okay. So the first rainbow warrior, I feel like a uh, price is white, like man. You know, like <laughs> okay. We got. Ooh, balance. Are you kidding me? Balance. Hello, balance. Remember what this is about? This is about balancing <laughs> the heart and the mind. I mean, seriously, we can't make this shit up. It's Nadia Munarola Korea, though, let's say. Okay, so we got butterflies. We've got, um, there's kind of a lotus flower. We got spirals. We got rainbow spirals. We got rainbow. Uh, What's that sacred geometry spiral called? The Fibonacci spiral. We've got the um, the mate the crone and the mother or the maiden. You see that? Mm -hmm. I got my silver haired self, my silver fox self, and my young young self. And uh, okay, so there's that. What's the dot on the? There's a dot on the. That's a piece of paint. Oh, <laughs> hilarious! Okay, there was. Something added to the card today. There was a dot There's on the butterfly. Well, there is a moon. And this is actually um, like an iris, I think, right? Any of you gardeners? Pretty sure that's an iris or a lily. Oh, it's like a day lily. And it's the Vescia Pisces, or it's kind of a yoni. Looks like a yoni. Balance. Wow, wow, wow. Even the back of the card is beautiful. If you show me well, the back of the well, card. Well, yeah, the back of the card. This card's ridiculous. That is the rainbow warrior. With the, with the heart leaping, you know, the eagle flying out of her she's, head. She's old school. I remember getting her decks in the 80s. And there was not so many decks in the 80s. As Do you want to reveal this one? been around that long. No. Okay. And then here's the symbol one. Seven of cups. Yeah, I love Can cups. Can you see it? And I'm a seven. Do you guys know your soul number? Anyway, I'll put that on the studio yeah, page. Too. Cups here. We'll go in a little bit closer. Ooh, what's that? What's cloak? The, is that a yeah, cape or even or is it like the vulva? The yeah, yeah, the vulvas, the Nordic witches covering themselves to do prophecy. So it's that whole I've got to go in the dark to see clearly. Yeah. Do you guys know that? Ooh, and a snake. You know, people. That. Snake and, and a, dragon. A griff. Is that a griff? A griffin or a dragon in clouds and a cloud. Castle? castle yeah but what is that thing on the upper left jennifer what is that and look at um the diamond yeah there's there's and the mandalas well, are those chakra mandalas or yeah it looks like it <laughs> oh, it's a lot going on there there's a, what's this bottom uh this is like the roman it's like a and the feminine symbol hello yep there i feel like go. there's the feminine sovereignty snake is feminine yep the cups, the dragon, dragon energy wants to help you on the ground. This is the dragon could be the symbol for the Saturn and Pisces. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. I think we Talk all want to paint that. a dragon. Talk well, I might that. Paint, paint a dragon. Hey, hoo -hoo. Wow. Okay. So based on those cards, mm -hmm. just like 
and watch your mind be like, what's the right symbol to paint? <laughs> Not a thing. There's no right symbol to paint. And just to illustrate this, okay, watch. She might freak out. Just in a second. Oh my God. Are you going to touch? Don't touch my painting. Don't touch it. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to disrupt this precious, oh, amazing. Around. Oh. Yeah, man. Divine messmaking. Oh, oh, looking good. Look at that. You know, I, I, okay. And here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> If we're doing that, okay, I'm doing that. Okay, I love it. Yeah, Oops. we need a picture of you now <laughs> with that. Yeah, and sorry, touch. Okay, it. Yeah. start covering over Owl there. Okay, Owl I'm working on it. She she sent me away. <laughs> no, I just I love it. I did get a little paint on the. Okay, sorry. Oh geez, you got paint on my shit. Are I got paint me? on the. <laughs> I'm gonna be invited back. <laughs> Okay, so now, ladies, in our open, the palace and the python. Yeah, so type in the chat, thank you, Roxanne, which symbol is like speaking to you and, and allow this to be a practice of heart, mind. Like you may have the symbol that like logically, so like I was really attracted to the dragon. I'm not sure my logical brain is quite engaged right this second, but it, there could be a part of me that's like, oh, that feels like a thing I should paint now. Should. Should. So what would be the symbol that I'm most attracted to? Mm. I like that lily butterfly. I like the butterfly with the dot, the, the yellow add-on extra special, get an extra honest dot. I always love that. Um... Okay. Well, I'm kind of feeling like playing with the castle because I'm kind of having a little, almost like resistance to the castle, Ooh. which as we know, you all, resistance is, um, is an invitation. That's a sign. Okay. So I'm going to take the white. Um, so then what you do, whichever symbol is kind of speaking to you, ooh, I'll do this upside down even. Ooh. <laughs> Just to really distract the. Um, what does the symbol that you're choosing to paint right now, which is just what you're choosing to paint right now, this isn't um, you know, what you're sending to the gallery or you know, to the starving children in Africa or to the White House or, you know, just whatever. This is just your musing. My castle looks like a fortress, which that's information. But what does the, the symbol make you think of? And if anyone wants to unmute and share the symbol they chose and what it's making them think of. So I'll share real quick just to, model for you because this castle is making me think of the book I was reading when I decided to open the creative fitness center called Zen and the Art of Making a Living. In it, he was explaining why we have kind of the programming that we have. And one of the ones that really struck me was that, you know, when the kind of serfdom and the royalty and the castle and the servants and all that broke down, the promise was that we could all be the king or queen of our own castle. Mm. So this is where kind of the American dream and the white picket fence and all this stuff came from. We all were all trying to be kings and queens, which is available to us when we're conscious of ruling our own realm. And what is truly the nature of the realm that we really want to rule with sovereignty? Anyone type it in the chat. What do you think it is? Yeah. I mean, there, I have a answer, but what is the realm that we're really wanting to have dominion over and sovereignty over? Be able to do whatever we want, say, make the rules and the laws and the, anyone, anyone? No, the heart, right? That's where our castle is. Okay, so that's what it's making me think of. 
and you can um, create visual meditation. So like now I might to feed the energy of my heart, I might go into meditation and imagine like this sacred space inside my heart. Like that's a very lovely shamanic kind of um, process, which that's all about connecting to the truth beyond the, beyond the stories, beyond the societal kind of programming, which none of it's bad or wrong. It's just way more creative than we were raised to believe. I do think some of it is bad and wrong, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa and I could have a little debate about some things. Yeah, okay. Right. Freedom of thought and choice. Yes. A woman, Kate. Magical world of our infinite heart. Absolutely. Does anyone want to unmute and share what your painting or which symbol spoke to you? Practice that. Think about your voice is right in between your heart and your mind. Mm -hmm. I'm making a spiral in gold, a spiral mm -hmm. in gold that I love. It's kind of a translucent, but not fully. Gold. And then I'm going to paint, paint a butterfly on top of it, even though I don't know. I don't think I have ever painted a butterfly before. It's kind of exciting and scary at the same time. Nice. Oh, I love that, Tracy. Thank you. Bonnie's here. Hi, Bonnie. I was just thinking of um, the butterfly story. Um, I was reading about the butterfly again recently, and you all know that truth about how um, butterflies, right, when they're ready to emerge from the cocoon, right, they um, they begin flexing their wings in the cocoon to break all those threads the thousands and thousands of silken threads that have been their home, their castle, that has guided them from caterpillar to mush into butterfly. And it takes a while uh, to break all those threads and they're just like, ur, 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 you know, working. It's like, it's a workout. And if you try to help a butterfly out by um, helping it, like break through that cocoon so it didn't have to work so hard, it would emerge and it would emerge with those beautiful wings, but it wouldn't be able to fly Ooh. because it builds up the strength through the struggle to be able to fly. Okay, are you all picking up what the butterfly's putting down for you? Without the struggle, and I was also thinking of my children. Yes, we were talking about the children. Yes, the children last night. And as parents, you know, sometimes we want to wish we could spare them the struggle, but if we did, they they wouldn't be strong. They have to learn, and uh, that actually is very consoling. I think so. Um, that's my favorite story about the butterfly. Um, Tracy, um, but there's so many, so many little lessons. Well, look, we got a little piece of something. Hi, I'm Noelle. Yeah. I have, how you doing? Hi, how are you? I thought I saw you there. Yeah, so I have some Phoenix coming through. Ooh, oh, nice. And it turned Wait, out what like is Phoenix? Yeah, how is Phoenix connecting to your current present moment experience right now? Um, if you'd be so kind. Yes. And it turned out to be like an open mouth singing Phoenix and they know I'm a singer. And, um, so for me, this is like the death of the old self and the new self merging up and singing and like, just to have like yellow gold stuff coming off of me. Ooh, As if I'm the Phoenix. Phoenix. That's my point. You are the Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. You so thank you for, thank you for the time and space to, to of, do this of course i'm so happy you're here it's so good to see you same um, thank you for all your tara chanting <laughs> melissa look what i'm doing now i'm scraping what i'm scraping Ooh. but like look at what's underneath because of all that color Ooh. Oh, look at that so 
I'm clearing the skies. The skies were cloudy above my castle. Yeah. And now I know this is delicious. Can they see? I know. Can you guys see this? Oh, now it's amazing. like a rainbow. So this is the sky above my castle, right? I've just been scraping. Oh, it's hard to tell. I love how the heart's sticking out though. Nice and strong. Yeah. Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Um, but that's super cool. There was a canvas I made once and I poured the epoxy over it and it was for a fundraiser, like benefit gala kind of thing. Oh my God. And I, I didn't, I tried to use different stuff. Actually, I didn't use epoxy. I tried to use something else. And the next morning it wasn't dry. It was still goopy. And like, I needed to take it to the oh fundraiser. And so I scraped it off. Ah! And then put the right stuff back on or something. And I tell you that painting was better. Was better. It was better because I had messed it up. So I hadn't really messed it up as it turns out. We love these lessons we learned. Anyone else have some show and tell? Or what you picked, what symbol you're using to create your aha today or your sense of Sunday. I can say good morning. Well being, yes, in there, darling. Hi, hello. Hello. Um, so what jumped out to me was on that symbol card, the the little sheet floating up in the top corner. Um, yes. And Thank for you. me, that is that that was straight away that that is our little our magical seeing ball you know, like our magical ball that we can look into and see, and it's got our little, our sheet of our friendly shadow over it. Ah. Wow. Ah, so ah. Playing with, <laughs> playing so show with us what you're painting. How do you paint a sheet? Ball. Yeah. Well, so. I mean, just how, so, you know, because people. <laughs> like, so straight away, it, it was. I love uh, the colors. Wow. The magic ball and it's spinning. Oh. And all the all our magic and love is coming out um, all around. That's what I'm sort of focusing on. Yeah, oh, I love it. <laughs> and it's straight away pixie. It, it has it has feels even though I'm you're describing it not to jump on what you're doing, but it has kind of a phoenix feel to me too. Well, of course, yeah. They're all like feathers starting to come yeah. out. That was like working with the spiral path of. Um, mm. our, our infinite love that is our heart. Yep. <laughs> right. And I see um, a volcano. Oh. Ooh, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We love volcanoes. The power of our love. Yes. Right. And wow. and when you, as you ladies pulled your card, I um I pulled out one of my old 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 decks called the Voyager from um way back in and like my. The Voyager Tarot, I have that one the too. Voyager, the Voyager, yeah. Look, look yeah. The, even the little books all fallen apart. I've had this. Oh, for, nice. Oh, That's a good years. Sign. I love that one, and um, and so I, the card I pulled and then I turned it over was Devil's Play. Ooh. <laughs> wow. And <clears throat> a couple of the things that it said from from there is to dance and drink. Your successes for life is a Saturnian harvest. So I thought that was kind of cool with the whole Saturn energy. And um, what was the other line that jumped out? Laugh your fears and sorrows away. It's the symbol uh, symbolising the law of celebration. There you go. The law of celebration. Now that's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We need more laws of celebration. I'm the celebration police here yes. to tell you that you have to celebrate more. Of our erotic pleasures. Oh, are you kidding me? It just gets better and better. <laughs> say more, say more. <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Well, I'll jump back off. Lovely to yes, see you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and here's the thing about, you know, like pulling you know, the devil card. I mean, we know historically um, and presently there can be fear around this kind of, you know, divination and, you know, the, the different cards. I mean, the owl, you all know my owl stories, the owl in a lot of cultures was seen as a symbol of death. 
but it's about a symbol of death, which means transformation, which is the aspect of you wanting to help you answer the question, what is wanting to be released right now? What is wanting to be released right now to empower you to create more of what you want? Right? What fear is wanting to be released? And that's, that's what those kind of shadowy, scary cards are all um, speaking to. I was reminded as well, the Melissa and I were talking about this mind heart theme and uh, Kali over there. It's okay, you can kind of see Kali over there on the wall. Remember, she always has the, um, oh, thank you. Off. Sure, she does, just lift her off. Gosh, she's, she's very flexible and mobile. Okay. Kali, um, so these skulls, in some of the stories, right, they're skulls that she's decapitated off people. And, you know, I love the message I got from Kali that was like, this is how much I love you. Like, even if you showed up wearing a necklace of skulls of people you decapitated and blah, 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 I would still love you. Right. Mm, mm. But the other symbolism is that these skulls are symbolic of the ego. It's the thinking mind. It's the over dominant mm. thinking mind. So she's cut off people's heads to help them get to their heart. Mm. And look with, so her, her speaking in wildness of the truth in the tongue looks like that heart a little bit that you've got there. Mm. A little bit of a parallel. There is a little bit of a parallel. It is fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, your castle could turn into a Kali. Mm -hmm. Kali castle. It's Kali's castle. She could be coming out of the top of the castle. Be coming out of the top of the castle. Okay. Yeah, I, oh. I'm doing it. So beautiful, beautiful Whitney. I wanted to just jump back in. I, I just was feeling that there might be um, a misunderstanding around the word devil and satanic and all that stuff. And I just, yeah, sure. I just thought just the context of why I, well that card jumped out. I, I didn't choose it, but I just thought we could speak into that because that's not yes. how I, I, I don't. Um, energizer embody any of all of that kind of thing I think that's the distorted fear-based um, controlling parts of our past and so I just thought I'd better read a little bit more of this just in case it's um, a little like muddied for people or whatever um, exactly. lift, your, lift your spirits by passion and play reinvent recreate yourself through recreation um, <laughs> just reminding us to lift our spirits and um, what was the other bit just then? You see a new way and break through Saturnian discipline and social convention. You free yourself and become natural, spontaneous and original. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Natural, yeah. spontaneous, and original. Yes, please. Yes. yes. If I can jump in, because I read Voyager, I've been working with them like forever. Yes. And what you just said is so perfect to talk about devil's play. It's yes. really about freedom. It's, yes. it's about breaking free of limitation. You can see the figures, they're jumping off the rings of Saturn. Yes. So it's really about very playfully breaking ah. free of that limitation. It's a great partnership card. And it's about really wanting to expand your consciousness. So the unevolved side would be to celebrate too much. So to party too much or to seek some substances to really change your consciousness in a way that doesn't serve you. So thank you so much for bringing that up. It really has nothing to do with some of the, you know, the old associated images with devil. So, yeah, thank yeah. you. I'm so happy you have Voyager. I love it. <laughs> Wonderful, Cynthia. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly it. Yeah. And it ties into um, Whitney's card of balance. That, you know, perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'll jump people. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's perfect. That's why I was saying, like, 
the, these things that have been um, traditionally labeled as bad or wrong has just been, again, no victims, but it's been fear-based, right? And so there is tremendous power in um, understanding and relearning these uh, ancient symbols that have been around forever. And there's lots of teaching. I won't even go into it, but I mean, there's, you could look up teaching around that, you know, and it's like um, some of you in the coaching calls, you know, I talk about sometimes how, like, if you feel trapped or stuck, let's own that. Like you are nurturing that feeling. You are trapping yourself. I've trapped myself. No one was actually physically holding me in chains. I was telling myself, this isn't available to me. I can't do this. I was my jailer mm. and I was my liberator. Mm. And I celebrate that every day. So mm. I, I needed the experience. I wanted the experience mm -hmm. of feeling trapped and stuck so I could liberate myself. And that's awesome. So there was nothing wrong in any of the shadowy underworld experiences. And um, those are all there. So that at this point, we could understand and have experienced the power of, you know, liberating ourselves from these old stories, from outdated beliefs, things that, you know, were created not to empower or spread more love, right? And the creative mind and the heart has access to this wisdom and understands the theme of non-duality. So for example, non-duality in your painting practice means you can paint an entire painting, accepting, radically accepting all the parts, the shadowy parts, the parts where you're like, seriously? And you're trying to make a living doing this? And <laughs> this is like the self-talk I get sometimes, right? Um, so we can practice embracing all of it, be like, wow, okay, so this isn't going at all the way I thought it would right now. I don't really like it. So how is that creating an opportunity for me to learn something new? How is it creating an opportunity to empower me? Right? So this is, this is the kind of curiosity and the kind of um, atmosphere that I create for myself, that creatively fit coaches learn how to create for themselves, that we learn how to create for others. Because this is the part of our wisdom that is wanting to heal and empower us right now. Because there's lots trying to disempower us, you know, and get us in fear. I mean, I haven't even turned on the news. I've been getting snippets and I'm not even going to look, right? So it's, this is the opportunity. Like, this is why we're here is because there's a lot of change that wants to be created. And the Saturn and Pisces energy is saying, okay, you dreamer sifting into a world based in love people, let's make this real. Let's bring this onto the ground, create it into our reality, right? So activating that creative spirit, that creative courage, that understanding that creativity is not about hanging art in a gallery or making money from the product of what you create. It's about remembering like, oh yeah, with my thoughts and my words and the ideas and beliefs I choose to hang out with, I'm creating my reality. So how can I more consciously create a reality that I really, really dig? <laughs> That's the call, right? Yeah. Making that real. Mm -hmm. So um, so it's exciting, even though it's scary. And it's exciting. And it's scary. And it's exciting. Well, and is it, part of it also is that you were talking about going into the zone with it, being able to get maybe out of the monkey mind and, and flow and calming the nervous system. I feel like the sensitives, we, we sensitive, creative, intuitive ones, it's the world is very loud. And so these places that we can find, these sanctuaries and these places that feed us and calm us and bring us back to being able to hear ourselves. And then we, we move from that. Like you're talking about the heart. Yeah. If your nervous system is, is really whacked out, you're not going to be able to hear it. Yeah. You had to tend to that. So this is the tending, 
We're the tending. tending. This is the tending. Love the tending. Yeah. Um, yeah. And all of you, I'd be willing to guess, all of you are sensitive. You're empathic. You are empath. You are people that feel the feeling, right? And it's why we love to help and heal and serve other people because we want them to be happy too. The trick is to fill your own cup. Hello? <laughs> fill your own cup up first. And um, and yeah, to access that heart wisdom and care for yourself because I mean, this is what 30 Days to Unstoppable is all about. Is like, we are energy first and foremost, and we can tend to that. And it's very available. And the painting practice is a way to do that. So, um, yeah. Hello. It's Christina. Yes, I'm Hi, talking Christina. about the heart. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. I was really drawn to your heart today and I couldn't get past any of the other symbolism because the heart captured me. And so I've painted a heart and I wasn't even ready for painting. I didn't know we were painting this oh morning. So I just ran and got my supplies. But I've created this heart with this mess around the outside. But the mess is the stories, all the stories that encapsulate around our hearts. Mm -hmm. And it just is really speaking to me as you're talking. Um, I'll show you. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. wait, hold on. Keep holding it up because I want to make sure. Okay. Oh, heck yeah. Wow. Yeah. So all the scribble is the stories that we that we tell ourselves, good or bad or indifferent, but they're the stories that we have to share. They're the stories that other people need to know about. And we just need to be brave enough to speak them. I love that. And any of you, like just looking at Christina's heart, right? Like what about her heart spoke to you? Like I saw all those scribbles and I'm like, whoo, that's a busy heart. Like in a good way, like that heart is engaged and working, right? It's like moving. And, uh, and I love that. But however you, like your first reaction to that heart, that's information as well. You know, keeping your journal next to your canvas is a beautiful uh, practice as well. Uh, oh, I don't have it here. I'm like, oh yeah, I created a painting journal. Anyway, on Amazon, there's the painting journal or a painting journal or something. Anyway, but keep, keep your journal handy because this is the voices that come through and the thoughts and the ideas. Thank you, Thank you Candace, my painting journal. Oh, I haven't showed you that yet. No, you saw it on the, you saw it in the house, but I didn't. Oh, we're just creative machines. I love it. Well, I've got, let me show you. And then I want to show and tell. And then um, we'll open it up. Oh, I see you, Deanna. Okay, one second. Um, is this right side up or upside down? That's upside down. Yeah. So now I've got my castle. I feel like such a little kid, which I love. So here's the castle with the heart, the dragon that's like guarding, protecting the, guard, the, the ally, the totem of the castle. And then we've got Kali. It's Kali's castle. <laughs> I love it. This is such a theme for me these days. It's just like painting without caring at all about mm -hmm. like what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Just following that, like, let's put a Kali sticking out of the castle and a dragon guarding. Mm -hmm. I love it. it. It feels very liberating. So very excited. Thank you all for inspiring me to create this space. I love it. Hi, Deanna. Would love to hear whatever you'd like to share. Thanks. Um, I don't know where I where I got everything, but I'm doing watercolors. So I started all with the purple spirally, just stuff going around, and then this female figure came through, mm -hmm. and I painted kind of the chakra green heart and then the little mandala kind of thing that after we pulled the cards yeah. those little mandala things that were up in the corner and then the chalice um at the base the red chalice, chalice. that's beautiful so, you must have screenshotted that to because you got those uh mandalas really 
Yeah. Oh, I, I, no, I was just making them no, up. No, you just did it. Wow. <laughs> but it. anyway, surprised and, and of course, loving it. Excellent. How do you feel now? Uh, well, combining head and heart, like, um, I'm going to explore that a little bit more. I do have my little journal here yeah. that I've been writing in as well. Um, so yeah, really just needing to connect with that. And yeah, as you see, the head is just opened at this point or the space of the head is still empty. Oh, empty. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Receptive. Right. Absolutely. Receptive. Yeah open. I love that. So much movement in that body. I just, when you held Thank that up, you. I just, I literally, I, I, it's like my body wants to sway mm -hmm. with that body it's inviting me to dance. Well, thank you. We are so connected because as I, as I put it right down again and went, oh, and she's dancing. <laughs> so when I'm I dance, dancing. you know, I get out of my head, right. I mean, just fully embodied space. And so Amen to that. Yes. 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 Thank exactly. <laughs> all the arts, right? Dance and music and visual arts and all, all the things are literally on this planet and part of the human experience since the beginning of time to balance our head and heart. <laughs> you all, this is why the arts are here. Or, I mean, the word art is flipping in the word heart. Yeah. Right. And wasn't the first card you pulled balance? Wasn't that the yeah, name? Of exactly. The I mean, that's crazy. Well, it's not crazy. It's that's just what's available to us when we kind of diverge. And again, you know, it's not about silencing or anything, the left brain, the logical mind. It is about balance. It is about understanding that everything is here to, to work together. And when we feel that disruption, that discordance, that dis-ease, that anxiety, that stress in our bodies, that's our body signal like, yo, we want to get back into balance, right? Mm -hmm. So this is, this is what we're offering through this painting practice. It's beautiful. I'm so grateful you all are here. Susan, darling, unmute yourself, please. Hi. Hello. Um. So I did splatter painting first, and then the chalice mm -hmm. to turn into wings. Mm -hmm. And then a bird came through, like a, almost like a stork bowing. Oh. And now it looks like a woman in here raising. Yes. Yeah. That's what I saw, like rising up out of the chalice and the wings and everything. Yeah. Above, baby. Fabulous. It's good for me. Yeah, right? Your, yeah. Um, the last painting you painted in this open studio was equally like, remember I told you to like put that, use that as the background for the project we were talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, I gosh. like this one too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing, Susan. You're welcome. <laughs> Does anyone else want to share? Oh, bye, Araya. Okay. Bye. I'll share mine. Raya is going to be a guide in the upcoming Creatively Fit Coaching Training. So if you're, some of you here, Maria, you're here, and uh, Christina, you're going to get to know Araya very well. Yes, yes. Yay. Okay. Um. Okay. So does anyone else have anything you know you want to say before we leave? And if you want, you can um, put any questions you have about the coaching training in the chat. Those of you coaches who are here, will you put in the chat the, like, whatever comes to you first right now, like the gift, the greatest gift you received from your painting practice during the coaching training or the biggest change you've experienced or something, you know, tangible that people can, can see. And I'll, I'll read some of those so it's on the video. Um, but truly, this, uh, this circle of creatively fit coaches is my happy space. I love you all so much and the next training starts March 21st and there are still some spots available and we are on a mission like we are one brush stroke at a time just getting as many people into this kind of practice and self-acceptance and creative possibility and letting go of that um, I am not creative thing 
Oh my gosh. Thank you, Kate, Delora and Kate. And you guys are doing the hold up thing. Um, um, there, a positive, there are live paintings like this in the coaching training. Yeah, absolutely. They're called open studio. Okay, does everyone want to hold their painting up for an, an art bath? An art bath. An art bath. Ooh, ooh. Art bath, art bath. What is art bath? Art bath. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There'll be a whole article deck right here. <laughs> everyone take a picture, post it on the Whitney Freya studio and it, only if you're down with people downloading and creating their own little digital oracle deck. I mean, holy smokerinis. Oh my gosh. I, painting skulls is like one of the most fun things to paint. <laughs> I highly recommend it. I love it. Oh, I just want to look. Tammy and Sitka. I love, look at all your pink. Hi, Shell. Candace. Ooh, Candace the snake. Delora, more hearts. Diamond hearts, look at all your rainbows. Kate, oh, Kate, oh, you've got the dragon. I see an owl, of course. No. Tracy, your butterfly is fabulous. Cynthia, oh, you've got a butterfly too. Jess, that looks like this ethereal, beautiful place I just wanna cuddle up in. <laughs> and Marla, I love it. Shell, oh, the rainbow on the ocean. It's like uh, Hawaii. Dottie, Kara, hi. Look at you, Karen. Thank you all. Wow, so fun. Do you feel that energetic difference, right? Just the like, oh, it's all gonna be okay. Everything is good. There is lots and lots of possibility. I am beyond grateful for you all being here. Okay, everyone, enjoy the rest of your day. And I will um, post the replay, the recording. Um, email me from any of the emails you get if you have questions. Yes, Melissa, hi guys. Do you wanna tell them anything, how to find you or? Um, I'm an indie deck creator and I do deep play online courses and I'm doing an event in October in New Mexico, a deep play magical event. Whitney may be there. And so October, New Mexico, one of the most enchanted places on the earth. Get in touch with your inner magical, wild, quiet, powerful self. <laughs> I'll post Melissa's info in the studio group too. We got lots to post. Okay, everyone, you're amazing. I'm gonna stop the recording. Uh -huh.